Okay. In this investigation, uh, we're going to be going the opposite way. We're going to have tables of data, and we're going to be trying to figure out um, what type of polynomial we get, or uh, maybe even the equation, depending on what we have. So I'm going to walk you through this. We have a table of data, and we'd like to try to figure out at least what kind of degree it would be. So a good place to look at it is our zeros. Remember, zeros are your x-intercepts. Zeros are when your y value is zero. So let's look through the table and find when the y value is zero. We have here, we have here, and we have here. That means my roots are x equals negative 2, x equals 0, and x equals 3. Those are also my x-intercepts, um, but we know we have at least three roots. Now, could some of them have been double or triple? I don't know. But I know it's going to at least have a degree of 1, 2, 3. So it's at least going to be a cubic. Now, if we predict the equation in factored form, remember you have to think about what equation or which factor would have given me negative 2 as a solution. Well, remember that would have been x plus 2 equals 0. So one of the factors has to be x plus 2. To get x equals 0, um, then we would have had... Well, we could put x minus 0, or we could just put x. Now, to get 3, that's going to be x minus 3. Now, I'm going to walk you through actually putting this data into your calculator. So, on a graphing calculator, when we list data like this, we're going to actually hit the stat button. And we want to edit. We want to put our values into these lists. So, um... The x values we go in L1, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And in y, L2, we're going to put our y values, negative 36, 0, 8, 0, negative 12, negative 16, 0, and 48. Now, I want to see what that scatter plot would look like. Since I entered the data in STAT, I'm going to go to STAT PLOT to plot the data. I need to turn my plot on. So I'm going to change this to ON. This first type gives me a series of points. It makes a scatter plot. It says, do you want your X values to come from L1? Your Y values from L2? Yeah. And this is where you can choose what kind of point you want. I don't really care. But I do want to be able to see all of my data. So if I hit the zoom button, I can select zoom stat. Since I have a table of values in stat, zoom stat will show everything in that picture. And there we go. Now, I want to see if my guess of an equation would give me that same picture. So I'm going to go into y equals, and under y1, I'm going to put x plus 2 times x minus 0, which could have just been x, um, times x minus 3. I want to see if the graph looks anything like the scatter plot. Well, the zeros match, which we know we, they do. The difference is the one I graphed is wider than the other one. Remember, what's going to make it wider? Well, that would be a number in front. So let's go back in here. And I can insert something using second delete. And let's try three. Oh, that got too narrow, didn't it? Hmm, what about two? Oh, yeah, that is right on. Perfect. And actually, if I look at my table, it is literally perfect. So I know that the final equation is going to be y equals 2, and I could just put x if I wanted to, x plus 2 times x minus 3. Now the next section on this worksheet um, talks about finite differences, and I've realized that a lot of people may not have done that, so we're going to go over that here in just a second. The first thing I want you to notice is, like we did before, let's look for our zeros. When is y zero? Well, 
I don't specifically see when it is zero, but it'd probably be right here. Here's when y is negative two, here's when y is one. I bet it's somewhere in there, but that's the only time I see a place where it might be zero. So all I can think is that this might be a linear. Now there's this method called a method of finite differences where you can figure out what type of polynomial you have. And I want to look at that now. All right, I have several tables of data listed. Finite differences means I'm going to subtract my y values or find the difference in my y's. Let's look at the first table. Well, if I subtract my y's, um, well, gosh, there is no difference in my y's. No difference means that our y values are constant. I have a constant function. y is 3 no matter what x is. Now let's look at this, and this is actually the table that we just had. When I take the y values, to from get from negative 14 to negative 11 is 3. This goes up 3, up 3, up 3, up 3. Hey, we're going up 3 every time. This is the first set of differences are constant. Do you see that that rate of change remains constant? Well, gosh, we know what that is. That's slope. y equals 3x. I wonder if we know what the y-intercept is. Ooh, we got so lucky. Y-intercept occurs when x is 0. There we go. And this would be a linear function. So we were right on our guess that it was probably linear. Now, let's look at this next one. Look at our differences. So we're going to go look at the first set of differences now. This is going down 5, down 3, down 1, up 1, up 3, up 5. So it's definitely not linear. I know that. So let's take the second set of differences and see what happens there. Negative 5 to negative 3 is going up 2, up 2, up 2, up 2, and up 2. So my second set is constant. Wonder what that tells me. You're right. It's a quadratic. And I wonder if we could actually come up with this quadratic. Um, y equals x squared. I know it's going to be an x squared. If I square my x's, let's see where I get. It'll give me a 9, 4, 1, 0. Hey, I'm just adding 1 to that. How easy was that? Now, the next one. Looking for those differences. From negative 36 to 0, so our first set of differences. To go from here to here, we went up 36. Here to here, we went up 8. Uh-oh, then we go down 8. Then we go down 12. Then we went down 4, up 16, up 48. This is definitely not linear. Let's go for our second set. 36 to 8. That is going down 28. From 8 to negative 8 is going down 16. Negative 8 to negative 12 is going down 4. Oh, then we go up 8. Then we go up, is that 20? Then we go up 32. It's not quadratic. Let's see about the last one. Third set of differences. From negative 28 to negative 16 is up 12. Negative 16 to negative 4, up 12. Up 12. Up 12. Up 12. 
third set is constant. What do you think? That tells me. Yeah, tells me how to cubic. And actually, this is the cubic from the very first example. Um, of course, it is a lot easier if you know where your zeros are to, to guess the equation um, and also to figure out what kind of polynomial you have. But this is a nice little tool to make sure that you're on the right track on the constants.